Hey guys, what's going on? This is Panther Dragon, and today we have a new season upon us starting in 2019, which is going to be season 9, of course. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about some tips for you guys to grind season 9, how to climb the ladder, etc. As you guys know, I have dedicated my life to, well, climbing the ladder and trying to get rank 1. I have gotten rank 1 in preseason and rank 3 peak in season 8. So you could say I kind of know how to climb a ladder, I guess. So I'm going to be teaching you guys in this video how to essentially climb a ladder very efficiently as these are the things I have learned while climbing the ladder for about 3 years trying to go for rank 1. This video will be sponsored and edited by Pro Guides. So check them out for all your rank game needs for season 9. And yeah, let's get started with this video. This is a juicy topic, never giving up. This honestly sounds like some bullshit, you know, something you'd see on those other YouTube videos. Never give up, you know, like every game is winnable, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, we know your teammates are dog shit and everything seems unwinnable, but it's actually true. Bro, I don't know if you guys have watched videos of me going 2 and 11 or 2 and 20, but I've won those games. You might be wondering, how did you win those games or why do you int? The simple answer is, uh, unfortunate events, but it doesn't matter because in these games where I int or unwinnable games, etc., my team is inting, I personally, one, don't care about my teammates, two, the only thing that's going through my head during these stressful times is I want to kill somebody, you know what I mean? So let's say I'm playing Garen top, I know what my limits are, I know like, oh, I can kill this guy even though I'm 2 and 11 because I know my damage, I know what Ignite and my R does, I can just flash Q, R, spin and win kill this guy and then there i'm 3 and 11 and that play might have been the play that turns around the game the play that gives you tempo so you can farm up the play that gets you some vision control for baron so you don't have to face check anything and you can stall the game because you know your champions are late game like essentially if you know your champion and even though you're 2 and 10 you can still make a play on the enemy if you know you have your power spike your items you're like kha'zix 2 and 10 but you have dustblade and a warrior and the enemy doesn't buy like Ninja Tabby for an AD carry, you can still one shot him. You know what I mean? So like all those games that seem unwinnable are actually winnable. You can see it in some of my videos. I go two and 10, I, I win because I'm always looking for the play. I don't have an ego, you know, I get camped. I'm zero and five. I don't go GG FF, this game is lost. Open 15, open 20 minutes. I go, okay, I'm Garen. I'm going to permanent split bottom. Bye guys. And this works. Like, let's say I'm facing an Orn who's 5 0. If I keep splitting bot lane, he'll never be able to team fight. And if they do send like two or three people this to come after me, it's like a waste of resources. And if the enemy, like Laner, does leave his lane, then I get a bunch of towers. Of course, that only works if, let's say, my team is winning the other side of the map. You know, obviously there's a bunch of factors to me inting and then actually still winning, but that was one of them. All I'm trying to say is I realized that, you know, I'm inting or whatever, but like for some reason inside of me, I always want to make the outplay the funny, I 1v1'd you even though I'm 0 and 5. Like that shit is actually hilarious to me. So because I'm in that mindset where I'm always trying to do something, I don't get tilted. And even if the game is 2 and 20, I still never give up. Like the enemy gets cocky, so they start face checking bushes, but you're there, you're like 0 and 10, you 1v1 them because they face check the bush and you're an assassin. Oh. You just killed him. And plus, because we have the new bounty system, it's so much easier to get yourself back into the game. You just need that one kill and GG, you're actually just going to be back in the game or at least one step. So that's why in this season, I'm actually going to be a better player because the bounty system actually benefits my playstyle a lot. Inting and winning. So yeah, um, one thing I actually do is if my team FFs, that's when I get super angry because I just don't like that mentality because every game in solo queue especially is winnable. Maybe not in competitive, but this isn't competitive. This is not competitive League of Legends. This is solo queue where anything can happen. Okay, enough about like me bragging that I int and win. Those are the games where, you know, obviously I love because it's kind of funny that I win when I'm three and 10. The next tip I want to give you guys is, please, if you want to climb the ladder, one trick or two trick, don't play a lot of champions. Just play one or two. Maybe you don't get your role. Okay, then dodge, I guess. But all I'm saying, like, if you're a Thresh one trick, you know, just keep playing that champion. You'll always, in every game, always improve and get better at that champion. And once you master the champion, everything just comes so natural to you. And there will be situations where you'll see an outplay because you already know what the enemy is going to do. So you take it one step further and predict their movements so you can land that, you know, your next flash Q or whatever. And now since everything's coming so natural to you, you can think about the game more like, oh, we have to rotate the top lane because we got the bot lane tower or no, 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 we, we should stay bot lane and get the dragon or I should roam here to mid lane because my lane is pushing into me. So my AD carry is safe because he can't get dove 
2v1. It's too early in the game. So because you're not thinking about what you should do as a champion, because everything's so natural to you that you're one trick on that champion, you now think about the overall game more and like what you should be doing to win the game or, you know, the next step. That is why one tricking is very good for climbing. That's why you see a lot of one tricks in high elo and then you see them off their one trick and they're just like complete ass. It's because they're not thinking about the map. They're not thinking about like, you know, where's Camille jungle? Is she top lane? Like, where is she? They're thinking about how the fuck do I play uh, bard support? They're thinking about how to play the champion rather than the map. Like, think about it. Maybe you're a one trick or like you play one champion to climb and then all of a sudden your champion is banned and you have to play this other champion. You're not thinking about the map. You're not thinking about like what to do next. You're thinking about how to play your champion. So you ignore everything that's going on on your mini map and you start to look at everything that's going on on your screen. Hopefully this statement kind of makes sense. Now, if you're done all of this, like you're not a one trick, you know how to play a bunch of champions, try counter picking, being the fifth pick and countering the enemy team's team comp. For instance, let's say they have Braum, Sejuani, and Orn top with something like an Ezreal who has low DPS if he's not fat I guess and Lissandra mid. You know who's really good into that team comp? Red form Kane. Kane loves tanks. He loves anything that's healthy. You know who's not really good into that team comp? Shaco because it's very hard for him to assassinate Lissandra. It's hard for him to one shot like Sejuani and all that stuff. Ezreal has Iceborne gauntlet so yeah it can be quite hard. You know what I mean? So counter picking can be really good if your champion can counter the whole enemy team comp. That's one thing I really like doing. Or I love picking Shaco into five squishies. You got Nami, you got Zoe mid, you got Ash, you got top lane Jace, and then the enemy jungler is like Kindred or something. You're going to 1v9. Unless your team comp's all AD, then it might be hard. But Shaco loves squishies because those are free targets for him. So you can pick a champion that's really good into an enemy team if you know like the matchups and stuff. A quick tip I want to give you guys is if you're on a two game or three game losing streak, I advise you to just get off your chair, stand up, walk into the kitchen, do something else for a bit, and then come back and play. Two or three game losing streaks are very frustrating to deal with mentally. The only reason I can do it is because uh, I've gotten into a mentality where I just don't give a fuck. This mentality can be switched on on and off for me because I guess I'm a psychopath. No, I'm just kidding. But all I'm saying is like, I do this mentality so that I'm able to perform in solo queue always. But I know for like a regular person, it's kind of hard to come over three or four game loss streaks. And if you guys have been watching me for a while, you guys know if I had a box of mental fortitude, there'd be a lot of boxes because I got a lot of mental strength to keep pushing and keep trying and going for the win and rank one. There are times obviously where I'm just fed up and I can't play the game. Like I'll just grief the game and I'll just suck ass. But that's when I know like I gotta stop because I've been there. So before that happens, I like tell myself I'm not playing anymore. I'm gonna take a break, you know? The next thing I wanna talk about is having two accounts. One account is your tryhard account. The other account is your, hey, I'm gonna practice other champions in a ranked environment. And that's also another way of getting better because you learn other things about other champions, how to play them. And then once you learn how to play a champion, then you know what to do against that champion on your main. Now, I do want to tell you guys something. Even though you're in platinum or gold or whatever, I've seen some platinum gold players who can play champions at even a challenger or diamond level. Like, you know what I mean? They make the L play. They do something like a challenger Riven would do, etc. The only thing they may lack is game knowledge. Like where they're supposed to be, rotating, etc. Like all I'm trying to say is you guys know how to play your champion. Like don't think about your rank. Don't think about like, oh, I'm a platinum five player versus a diamond three as jungle. Or I'm a platinum five player versus another platinum five, but this this jungler has 80% win rate. Don't think about like things that can scare you. Don't think about anything like that. And just play your game, play your champion. Don't be scared. You're like in platinum three versus TF Blade top lane. Don't be scared. Play your champion. Play the matchup. I guarantee you, if I can solo kill TF Blade three times in top lane with Sion versus Camille, I don't even know the matchup, but I'm just saying, if you know the matchup, you know the champion, you know your limits, you can, you have a chance of winning against TF Blade. As long as you play the matchup and your champion, you have a better chance of winning if you play like that versus, oh, I'm playing against this player. That's why you see a lot of pros maybe turn off some of their names. It's for their mindset, for their mentality. They'd prefer to play against a champion rather than the player. So they don't have a mental block. Like I used to have a mental block against Tarzan, but now like, I don't know. I just, it doesn't matter, you know? Oh, the next thing I want to say is don't type to your teammates. Don't let out your frustration. Keep it all bottled inside of you until the end of the game. Don't like, 
don't like tilt your teammates you know that's one thing you don't want to do like let's say you're ganking bot lane and the thresh doesn't even go for a hook he just runs back to his tower okay um Hmm, maybe I'd type then, but uh, I'm just gonna say the player probably already know. Okay. Okay, those are the special cases where like the player doesn't know what's going on, I guess. But like, I'm just trying to say maybe the Thresh misses a hook and then you blame him for missing the hook on a CC target. Dude, don't type to him. Like, he already knows he fucked up. He missed a hook on a CC target. Yeah, I know. It makes you feel better and makes you feel like this guy's stupid and I'm smarter. And you know, that's. That might be true and it feeds your ego but in the grand scheme of things it doesn't help you win the game it makes you more vulnerable to losing the game because now you're getting into an argument with your thresh who is now getting frustrated because he's got someone bitching at him and doesn't feel like trying anymore and also you get frustrated because you let out your frustration onto him instead of keeping it all bottled in so now you have two tilted players instead of maybe one because you saw what your thresh did or it could be zero if you didn't care at all you see what i'm trying to say not typing means two less tilted players maybe you're a really good player and you know like everything that should happen but someone messes up and then you just full-on rage mode at him and now you're tilted and then he's tilted you know what i mean so i'm just saying unplug your keyboard and uh you know flame him after the game how about that if you guys are one of those people who like ff you know what i mean at 15 or 20 minutes just remember every game is winnable because there's a bounty system that you can count on to make the game winnable even if you don't believe in it try getting into the habit like trick your brain into saying every game is winnable you know when mo was doing twitch rivals and he kept saying it's fine like whenever his teammate died that's positive thinking that's how you win games even though he was two and eight it's fine like yeah even though he lost imagine having that mentality over 20 games like you'll be in winning situations 10 of the games and 10 games you'll be in losing situations those 10 games you're winning auto wins those 10 games you're losing well honestly 50 percent of them might be winnable so that's like 15 net wins over five losses you know that's pretty good now let's say you have a really bad mentality like 10 and 10 winning losing same situation you're playing draven in all 20 of those games and in those 10 winning games you're winning so you're gonna just be aggro and just shit on them. While the other 10 games, you just go FF 15 minutes. Game is unwinnable. I don't want to play anymore. I gave up. I'm gonna keep playing and, you know, do whatever. Because my team didn't FF, but I don't feel like trying anymore. And if you, like, vocally say that to your teammates, they feel that negativity. So it goes onto them and they don't feel like trying anymore. And it's like, you know, spreading disease onto other people. Really bad metaphor, but I can't think of anything else. But yeah, then his net wins will be 10 and 10. So yeah, League of Legends solo queue is literally, it's all about testing how good your mental fortitude is. That's how I got rank 3 and rank 1. There might be a lot better players than me. There's a lot of better junglers, better ADCs, etc. Better supports. But maybe they type too much or maybe they can't stand their AD carry. They get frustrated. Because of those factors, they tend to break down and don't want to win anymore, you know? They stop trying. I just can't wait until the game's over. Like, I really hate people like that because they could be the reason why I fucking lost the game, you know? But you have to remember, every game is not winnable. If you go into a game where you're expecting a win and you don't get that win, you're going to be so tilted and frustrated, you're not going to know how to control it or express it. So, I mean, I just want to say, like, do what you can do. Don't focus on your teammates. Just focus on yourself. Play the game and don't be a typing simulator. And yeah, to conclude this video, don't tilt, don't type, try to counterpick, concentrate on yourself, play one champion, or limit yourself to a small champion pool. And yeah, just try and improve on yourself. And yeah, essentially, those are my tips on how to climb a ladder. I'm sorry if I didn't give tips tips like oh play thresh because he's so broken or play shaco because he's so broken and play the highest win rate champions i used to say that actually but then i actually figured out how to play the game kind of like there's many reasons why you know someone is stuck in their elo but this is what i can do for the long run if you guys are trying to get to uh, gold five from iron four you know these are long-term tips not uh, some cheese shit in game to win you one game I'm not going to tell you how you get better because there's multiple things that you might not be good at. So, you know, if you want to do get better gameplay wise, go watch a streamer, go watch a YouTuber who is good and then learn from how they play the game. That's my best advice if you want to get better at the game and then obviously try to copy them. Anyways, that's it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.